Big changes are on the way here at City College as the future of the administration is in limbo. We'll have the latest. Plus in November, voters will choose the president and make some big decisions on proposed California laws. We'll explain. And the big shakeup in politics, the Republican Party nominee is locked. We'll show you what Donald Trump is saying about his competitors. Then after years of setbacks and construction, a historical downtown park is finally open. Stay tuned. New scene starts right now. Hello and welcome to New Scene. I'm Marie Morave. And I'm David Burdell. Thank you for joining us. In breaking news, three people are dead following three, three people injured in three separate shootings in the past 24 hours, the most recent in the parking lot of Bethesda, Maryland Shopping Mall. The mall and five nearby schools were on lockdown and law enforcement officers Law enforcement officer Eulelio Tordil is the person of interest and in custody now, accused of being responsible for all those acts. All shootings are believed to be related. We'll keep you updated as the story continues. A big career move is in the works for the current president of City College. Anthony Beebe was recently selected as Santa Barbara's new president. Gabe Salazar is here with what this means for our campus. Thanks, David. President Beebe has been at City College for less than two years, so many were surprised to learn about his sudden departure. This move leaves many faculty members and students wondering about the future and the stability of this school's administration. Dr. Anthony Beebe began his term at City College in August 2014. Throughout his career, he earned an impressive degree of titles, including Master of Business Administration, Doctor of Education, and Doctor of Philosophy, among others. He placed a strong emphasis on making connections and commitment to the community. But what's also important to, to recognize is the work that's being done by these students, the students that we have at City College. This is sophisticated work here. This is real research that's happening. However, amid the surrounding issues regarding class cuts, accreditation, and the arrest of an employee, some feel that the pressure was mounting. I think he left us hanging, you know, the department, the school. For him just to right away go to another school, I think uh, with all the issues that we're having, especially with the class cuts, and, um, you know, uh, and stolen stuff that we're still going through court, I think uh, he should have stayed. Tough. Declined any on-camera interviews, citing a busy schedule. Immediately following his resignation, the chancellor appointed the vice president of student services, Denise Wisenhunt, as acting president beginning July 1st. She will remain in that post until a new president is selected. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Gabes. We'll definitely keep an eye out for that for our city college president. A huge change is coming for tobacco users who are under the age of 21. The Governor Jerry Brown has passed a bill raising the smoking age. Young teens who were 18 and over were allowed to buy smoke legally, but now they will be, need to be 21 years or older. Brown also passed a bill allowing tobacco taxes to pay for the tobacco-related illnesses and health care needs for those of them. Also, smokers will no longer be able to use e-cigarettes in public. California may be following four states and changing its policies this November when it comes to marijuana. A proposed bill states that marijuana will be legal to anyone 20 and older. This proposed measure makes it legal for someone to grow up to six plants, but smoking in public will still be illegal. There will also be a 15% sales tax. Senator Bill Monning of California says mandatory sentencing isn't deterring the Constitution's solicitation of prostitution. Therefore, he wants to see other measures exercised to prevent the, re uh, the repeating offenses. The alternative for jail time would be sending these victims of human trafficking to propaganda programs. In the program, if the program doesn't work, the victims refuse help, then sending them individuals to jail would be the only option. This past week in politics was one to remember as former President Bill Clinton stopped here in San Diego to campaign for Hillary Clinton. And also two Republican presidential candidates dropped out of the race, which left one candidate as the presumptive nominee. Here is your political update. It was a landslide victory for Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump as he was able to secure the 57 delegates in the Indiana primary on Tuesday. Trump's victory was the last straw for Ted Cruz, 
It forced him to suspend his hopes of becoming that Republican nominee. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect it. And what Ted did is a, a really a very brave thing to do and a great thing to do because we want to bring unity to the Republican Party. Trump had nearly a 500 delegate lead over Cruz. Trump's substantial lead in the overall delegate count also forced John Kasich to step down and suspend his campaign after struggling to gain any ground over the past month. And on the Democratic side, Senator Bernie Sanders grabbed the victory against Hillary Clinton in the Indiana primary by winning over 50% of the vote. But Sanders is still falling behind Clinton. Clinton is closing in on the required 2,383 delegates to win the nomination. I think we can pull off one of the great political upsets in the history of the United States. As Trump is now the presumptive Republican nominee and Clinton still the Democratic leader, a new poll by CNN and the ORC has Clinton beating Trump if the two were to square off in November. Next week, Clinton and Sanders will look to gain more votes in West Virginia primaries and later in the month in Kentucky and Oregon. There was also speculation whether Donald Trump would hold a rally here in San Diego this Sunday, but news broke that it will be postponed until a later day. Stay tuned for news scene for possible updates. Also, a day after her husband, former President Bill Clinton, spoke at Balboa Park, Hillary Clinton made an appearance in East Los Angeles. Gabriela Fernandez has the story. She spoke in front of a full crowd at East Los Angeles College. You know, I got to start by saying on Cinco de Mayo, I can't think of a better place to be than right here. She wasted no time criticizing her opponent, Donald Trump. Donald Trump doubled down on his plan to create a deportation force. The best way to prevent that from happening is to make sure he never gets near the White House. She also had strong points on immigration. We are a nation of immigrants, and I am proud of it. We are stronger together, and our diversity is one of our strengths. To the sound of cheers, Hillary laid out her vision of what she will do as president. The crowd grew louder, but not everybody was screaming her praise. A group of protesters got into the event and were pulled out one by one. Mrs. Clinton's speech was about 15 minutes in length, but the action was just getting started outside the college gymnasium. Supporters and protesters clashed in the walkway leading out of the event. Police in riot gear came out and positioned themselves to stop any violence. The protest remained peaceful, but activists had strong opinions. More money from Goldman Sachs for a 25-minute speech than most teachers make in 10 years. We're just trying to get our point across she's not welcome in L.A. She's not welcome as our president. She's not welcome as a person. But not everybody was so critical. Secretary Clinton still has her supporters who waited hours to hear her speak. With Hillary's administration, maybe she could get this ball rolling because it's not fair for families to be separated. Of all the candidates running, she has the most fundamental understanding of the way the government works. This hotly contested election will no doubt be tough for everyone involved. This is Gabriela Fernandez reporting. Phone banks in preparation for the California primary on June 7th. All right, well, coming up next, a little girl in Flint, Michigan is making a big difference for her community, and it's got the attention of President Barack Obama. And find out what playoff record did the Cleveland Cavaliers crush earlier this week. Found out, find out later in sports. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, is she texting me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here.
a local Navy SEAL has been killed in the Middle East. 31-year-old Charles Keating from Coronado Naval Base was killed in an airstrike by ISIS on Tuesday. Keating was the instructor of a naval base before he left Iraq earlier this year. Keating was engaged to a San Diego woman and they were supposed to have their wedding in November upon his return. Two U.S. trained militias have begun fighting each other in Syria. While the aid from, Pentagon, from the Pentagon is publicly known, CIA has been backing militias in a covert way to pressure President Bashar Assad and his government into negotiations. While these operations were in different areas due to airstrikes, they have been getting closer. Experts in the region say that these groups will fight due to the U.S. losing control because of the chaos. And President Obama made his first trip to Flint, Michigan after the water contamination crisis and met with the locals and officials in person. His, trips was, his trip was inspired by an eight-year-old activist. Maria Fani has a story. A little girl in Flint, Michigan got her wish. President Obama traveled to Flint after receiving a letter from 80-year-old Mari Kopney. Mari, with her mother's help, wrote to the president on behalf of Flint children and asked him to visit their town. This is Mari telling the president what she thinks of Flint water. It smells like bleach and old fish. They received a call from the White House and were surprised. The water crisis has been an ongoing investigation. Now, in a strange twist, last month a young mother who sued over water contamination was found fatally shot. Sasha Bill was one of the first to sue after her son came down with lead poisoning. According to police, it was over a domestic dispute. A suspect is in custody. Her death comes days after another death. This one, 43-year-old Matthew McFarland, who worked at the Flint Water Treatment Facility. McFarland was questioned by investigators previously on whether or not officials had downplayed the dangers. The cases are still open and investigations continue. Mary's mother hopes Obama's visit is more than just a photo op. Yeah, I hope that maybe with him coming here, it'll open his eyes to how bad it really is and how it's not just people blowing it up and out of proportion that he can see for himself. I really did need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. This week, President Obama tasted the water for himself. If you're using a filter, if you're installing it, uh, then Flint water at this point is drinkable. Mari is given the title Little Miss Flint and is being recognized for her activism. Maria Fani, New Scene. President Obama called the city's public health crisis a man-made disaster and the result of a, quote, coarse attitude. Then American politics towards government regulations re leading to systematic neglect. He also urged the residents to install filters and not lose hope. With poaching being a growing problem in Kenya, government officials are fighting back. A 10 by 20 foot platform holding over 105 tons of ivory and other materials were burned on Saturday. Officials say this sends a message to the world about the destruction through poaching. Around 30,000 elephants die a year due to the illegal poaching. poaching. After decades of performing for thousands of people, Ringling Brothers closes the curtains on one of the acts for good. The elephants performed their final act on Sunday in Rhode Island to a tearful crowd who reminisced on memories of the circus. But several animal rights groups repeatedly criticized, boycotted, and protested the treatment of the elephants. And other animals performed for what they call inhumane and cruel acts. The elephants will be heading to Florida, Conver conservation facility in 2018. An entire school district was forced to cancel classes after extensive vandalism. Tuesday morning, a Warner Springs Unified School District maintenance worker discovered damage to several of the buildings, classrooms, a library, and offices. Warner Springs Sergeant Carlos Medina says the damage includes graffiti, broken windows, toppled furniture, and fire extinguisher discharged in the classrooms. A school resource deputy is currently handling the investigation and classes are scheduled to resume next week. All right, now a lot of playoff basketball happening right now. Um, Brian is here to show, to report on this, this week's sports. So Brian, tell us what you got with those winners and losers. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, I definitely have plenty of highlights for you. But today I'll be talking about playoffs, playoffs, and more playoffs, specifically the race for the NBA championship. I love this time of the year. Every single game just means so much more. Let me take you to round two action in Cleveland Wednesday night. If you're a Hawks fan, I would advise you to turn away now. 
LBJ and company decided to do their best Golden State Warrior impersonation, except they did it a little better. They made not one, not two, not three, but 25 three-pointers en route to dismantling the Atlanta Hawks, 123 to 98. They also broke an NBA postseason record with the most trifectas in a game. It was raining in Cleveland. Watch this off the heezy. <laughs> Amon Shumpert, all good. The Cavs now have a 2-0 commanding lead over the Hawks, and LeBron is 16-0 when going up on opponents 2-0 in series. It's not looking too good for the Hawks. Let's keep on rolling with more hardware highlights. Miami faced off against the number two seed Raptors last night and again on, on Tuesday night. They kicked off the series, and it's been an epic battle so far. Check out how Kyle Lowry made the game go into overtime on Tuesday night. Unfortunately, Dwayne Wade and the Heat would have too much in overtime, and the Heat surged ahead for the game victory 102 to 96. The two teams faced off again last night, and it took overtime to handle this one. To figure out, uh, Kyle Lowry showed up late again and forced another overtime. Just great basketball down the stretch. And in the end, the Raptors were physical down and were able to hold series, hold, hold the serve, and tie the series up 1-1. Out West, there was plenty of action also. The San Antonio Spurs will play Game 3 tonight. Make sure you tune in and catch that series. It's tied up 1-1 after a controversial Game 2 where the Thunders won in San Antonio 98-97. And then you have the Steph Curryless Warriors. They've taken a 2-0 lead over the Portland Trailblazers Saturday night, and the two teams will match up again. This time, it will be in Portland. Hopefully, it makes Rip City can bounce back and get that series back on track. Okay, and that's all the basketball I have, but I did promise you playoffs. The Stanley Cup is up for grabs. One team whose chances got a little better, Pittsburgh Penguins. Led by all-star Mason Crosby, the Penguins lasted my Washington Capitals, again to take a 3-1 lead in the series. Although the Caps star Al Ovechkin has started finding the net more so as of late, the Caps have fallen behind and haven't won a, and they're 3-0 in the beginning of the postseason, but have now fallen to 2-5. It's not looking good for my president's team. And that's about all the sports that I have for you this week. Thanks for joining in. Back to you guys at the desk. All right. Thank you, Brian, for that sports update. Well, we'll find out what goes on soon, and we'll keep you updated. When we come back, find out what student film here at City College took home a San Diego Film Award. Also, we'll give you the latest entertainment news about music icon Prince's death and find out who will be doing a nude photo shoot with her gold medal. Stay tuned after the break. I'm captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? Ooh. Wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Earlier last month where the San Diego Film Awards and the students here on campus came out with a victory. Yep, that's right. A couple of the City College students came together in, to enact and produce a short film titled Pizza Shop. The film won the Spirit of the San Diego Award in the short film category. The director of the film, Devon, Devon Jones, expressed that the other students should take advantage and opportunities to submit their film to local festivals and contests. Actually, this is an opportunity for other students to just give yourself a chance. You know, I didn't think that this film was going to go as far as it's going. And my professor was like, well, if you made a film, they have festivals coming up, give yourself a chance, submit it and see what happens. And that's what I did. Alvaro, go to C5. Mm -hmm. 
the long-awaited opening of the historic Horton Plaza is here, and we kicked off right in the traditional San Diego way with a lot of food, drinks, and a whole lot of fun. Yeah, the iconic landmark has been the heart of the city since 1870 and has attracted presidents, civil rights activists, and visitors from around the world. However, for the better part of the last decade, the site has been under construction, leaving a eyesore in the heart of San Diego and has left a bad taste in the mouths of many San Diegans. But in recent days, that taste has turned sweet with the park's grand reopening. Mayor Kevin Falconer gave a beautiful speech to dedicate the park and reminisce of the years past of how Horton Park had a special place in our hearts. You can check out the new hotspot anytime, and the city is boasting over 200 events every year. So if you haven't already, definitely go check it out when it gets a little bit sunnier, maybe. Yeah. All but right. <laughs> yeah, All right, now let's move to entertainment <laughs> with Gio Giovanni Pio with the latest Hollywood buzz. All right, in this week's entertainment news, the top story once again is, of course, Prince. Now with the latest buzz from Minneapolis and the events of Prince's untimely death. It's reported that the singer's reps called Dr. Howard Kornfeld, who runs Recovery Without Walls in Mill Valley, California, and treats opiate addiction. His rep explained that Prince was dealing with a great medical emergency. Dr. Kornfeld flew his son, Andrew, out to Princess Chanhausen, Minnesota State by taking the red eye out of San Francisco. However, when Andrew arrived at Princess Estate by 9.30 a.m., the 57-year-old musician was nowhere to be found. Shortly thereafter, Prince was found unresponsive in the elevator and was pronounced dead. The coroner's office has reported that Percocet was found in his system. Well, 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 what have we here? The iconic singer Janet Jackson is pregnant with her first child. A source confirmed to Entertainment Tonight. The baby news arrives after the 49-year-old singer, who turns 50 on May 16, announced last month that she will be postponing her tour to start a family with husband Wissam al Mana. We're in the second leg of the tour, and there actually has been a sudden change. I thought it was important that you be the first to know. My husband and I are planning our family, um, so I'm going to have to delay the tour. Please, if you can try and understand that it's important that I do this now. I have to rest up doctor's orders, but um, I have not forgotten about you. I will continue the tour as soon as I possibly can. Well, Miss Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce, has been announced to grace this summer cover of Sports Illustrated in the Nude. The nude photo shoot is in commemoration of her 40th anniversary for winning the gold medal during the 1976 Montreal Summer Games when the now 66-year-old set a decathlon record. She'll pose with her gold medal for the first time post-transition, making her quite excited. Perhaps this is just a little payback from when her ex-wife, Chris, appeared topless with a medal during a 2007 shoot on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Until now, Jenner says she stashed her most prized possession at the bottom of her makeup drawer. Well, thanks, guys, and that's a wrap with my Hollywood report. Once again, I'm Giovanni Fiol, bringing you all the new scene buzz from Hollywood back to you, guys at the desk. All right, thank you, Gio, for the entertainment update. Stay tuned to see what Warner Bros. has in store for Bugs Bunny's next big adventure. And if you look outside our window, it's wet outside. How long do we need to keep using our umbrellas? Stay tuned. Stephanie Roach has this weekend's weather forecast. Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. That means many of the future doctors who will care for us, the engineers who will build our cities, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. And every day more people support you to make it happen. Many support you. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan and pay for your kids' college education. HSF.net. Hey, 
everybody. Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go. To the Batmobile. Dang it. To the invisible jet. Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Just how long we're going to take to experience this rain? What can we expect, Stephanie Roach? All right, thanks, guys. Uh, last week, up until yesterday, we have been experiencing the calm before the storm. So if we take a look at our um, downtown view, we can see that there are the clear skies from last night. Took, gave us a little break from the gloomy weather been, we've been experiencing earlier this week. Um, but the storm did come back around 9 o'clock last night, bringing in some showers through this morning, which we saw earlier today. Uh, but I'll get back to that in a minute. First, let's take a look at our national forecast. Pretty mild temperatures all throughout the county, country. Uh, the Four Corners, spring seam showers, as well as the east coast up from the north to the south. If we look at our temperatures, also very mild, 60s through the uh, west coast, uh, some mid 80s in the New Orleans, Florida areas, more 70s up towards the north. But the real question is, what will San Diego be like this weekend for Mother's Day? So if we take a look at our downtown view, you got the Coronado Bay Bridge there in the background. Mostly gloomy skies right now, still some soggy from this morning's rain. But that will that we are experiencing a little bit of a break right now that will come back as we look at our Doppler radar. We can see that storm system moving in from the west over to the east from Los Angeles all through down to Tijuana. But if we look at our seven day forecast, we can see today is gonna to be a little bit rainy later on tonight. All through Saturday, where we'll be experiencing thunderstorms, but for the rest of the week, Mother's Day, looks like a beautiful time. So back to you at the desk. All right, thank you, Stephanie, for that weather update. Hopefully it'll clear up for Mother's Day. Well, if you're familiar with the phrase, what's up, Doc? The Looney Tunes are back in action. This time with a sequel to the hit movie Space Jam. Yeah, the Fast and Furious director Justin Lin is set to direct the intergalactic baseball basketball sequel, while another number 23 will rejoin Bugs Bunny and company for another crazy adventure. Not Michael Jordan, but Cleveland Cavaliers star LeBron James. James will have some big shoes to fill as Jordan Space Jam Jam made $230 million and soundtrack went 60 times six times platinum. Yeah, so today there is no release date for this sequel, but I'm really excited and you know Mother's Day is this weekend, so you know what I might do is pop it, you know, pop in the VHS and watch <laughs> it with my mom. <laughs> I hope you still have yours running. Mine's not. I'm out of VHS for now. Yeah. But <laughs> thanks for tuning in to New Scene. I'm Marie Morave. And I'm David Perdell. Thank you for joining us and, can, can, and stay tuned for next week's uh, edition of New Scene. And a happy Mother's Day and make sure you treat her right, as always. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thanks, guys.